working out hard every day to be the best I can. I shift it to the right, shift it to the left, hunger down low and reach high to the sky. Got my rhythm down pat, so they say. I'm looking like a winner in every way. So when I hear somebody say, what a horse, I know they're talking about me, of course. And I'm going to be in that winner's circle someday. Yeah, I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker, a high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker. I'm going to be in that winner's circle someday. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this edition of What a Horse. We're ready for another off week as far as yes. we're concerned. Nothing's close. Nothing close. So we'll, right. find, we'll find something <laughs> to do. Go ahead and do your deal, and we'll get started. We'll be right back after these messages. Hi, it's your friend Abby at Jim Armstrong Super. Just wanted you to know KBB voted Super best overall and most trusted brand once again. ACSI also named Super number one in vehicle safety, and KD Power is also named Super number one in brand loyalty. Last but not least, they're number one in my book too. So come see me and your other friends at Jim Armstrong Subaru and see what being number one is all about. Two-time world champion and world grand champion Joe Hall is now standing at stud during the 2023 breeding season at Precious Memory Farm for $750. Contact Daniel Miller, 931-703-5830 or Shane Porterfield, 615-809-4257. Joe Hall is now standing at stud at Precious Memory Farm. Hi, I'm Smokey Bear, and I made an assistant to help you out, because only you can prevent wildfires. Hey, Assistant Smokey Bear, call me Papa Bear, because I'm grilling up dinner. <laughs> do you get it? Yes, good job. So, what should I do with all these coals? Don't just toss them out. Put them in a metal container, because those embers can start a wildfire. I understand. The stakes are high. Ha, 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 ha. See, Smokey thinks I'm funny. Perfection Leather, a division of the Winter Circle. Our high quality products are handcrafted at our manufacturing facility in Shelbyville, Tennessee, using the very finest Wicked and Craig bridle and harness leather. All hides are thoroughly inspected to ensure consistent thickness and a smooth finish. They are also examined for any imperfections that would reduce the quality of our products. After inspection of the hides, each piece is hand cut or die cut to the product's precise specifications. Each component is then assembled by an experienced craftsman. The assembled product is then stitched by an experienced operator using state-of-the-art lock stitch machinery. The stitched product is then finished and hand polished to their completion. After completion, each product is carefully inspected for quality assurance. All of Perfection Leather products are available at the Winter Circle Horse Supply. The Tennessee Walking Horse is rapidly becoming the horse of choice when selecting a great ride for the family. If you're looking for a smooth, easy ride on the trail that will take you through hills and streams or an obstacle course competition, the versatility of the Tennessee Walking Horse will stand out by showing its willingness to learn in its smooth, easy, steady gait through the course. If it's a competitive show horse you're looking for, the Tennessee Walking Horse is the perfect family horse by young and old. Whether it's flat shot or padded performance classes for an amateur adult or youth, a walking horse is the horse of choice. The Tennessee Walking Horse is perfect for every equestrian division. Also remember one simple truth. If you ride one today, you're on one tomorrow. That's a fact. 
All right, welcome back. Got just a couple of announcements. Sheba's got their 38th spring show, the 5th and the 6th, over at the uh, uh, Cooper Steel Arena called Janice Pope, 931-684-7496. And start time Friday night is 6, Saturday is 4. May the 6th, Parker's Crossroads. Contact Gary Gilmore, 731-693-6978. My buddy Link Webb's going to judge down there. And then next Friday, May the 12th, Humboldt, Tennessee. Contact Vicki Benjamin, 731-694-5188. And my good breakfast buddy, Robbie Spiller, is going to mark the cards there. Next Saturday, Youth Equine Support Show in Lynchburg, Tennessee. Start time is 4 p.m., you can contact Marcy Allison, 931-639-2518, or Francis Bates, 931-703-9797. We have 10 judges. They will be pulled out of the hat before the class, and everybody will know who's going to be judging. I'm looking forward to that. I want to remind everybody that all the money goes to have shows, classes, and events for youth will not be used any place else, so don't ask me for nothing. <laughs> How's that? That'll work. That's That'll about work. as good as it's going to get. Uh, Jerry, you know, the industry, we, we, we've got different things that's going on now. Uh, we got a, a scar rule lawsuit that we could file, which to me would be a good thing because then the action advice wouldn't be such a big deal. Yeah. Uh, plus the fact that they'd have to rewrite the inspection process. So we're talking about time. That's why it's so, so important. There's so many things that's going on in the industry that anything that can help us and put a positive light, and we all know that the scar rules is, is it's more or less an illusion. Yes. Uh, you, you've seen what I've seen. Uh, I, I see them calling horses out, and I wonder, where, where is it at? It's like Judd Matheny one time said, where's the scar? It's right there, but there's nothing there. I said, but it's right there. Yeah. And we relate back to the, even though it's two or three sales dick stuff. But if we got rid of the scar rule, it would open up so many doors for this industry and according to everything I've heard, that's pretty much a slam dunk yeah. if we if we try to get it. Now this weekend, uh, you went to both shows, didn't yes, you? Yes, I went to both shows. What did you think about the inspection processes this weekend? Well, you know, show done a good job on checking horses and stuff like that. But now it's just like this government thing to me. It's just like a teeter totter. It goes from one side, from one extreme to the other. You know, um, the weekend before last, you know, the government was there at both shows, there in, um, in East Tennessee and Kentucky. And I mean, didn't have a problem. Everybody was going on. But now this weekend here, it was like a to took a totally different turnaround. Well, it was according to which show you was at. Yeah. Because the uh, racking horse, they didn't have any problems. Uh, really and truly, up in East Tennessee, there wasn't a problem. I think. Uh, the lady up there had three violations that she found. But, and he, here, here comes my problem. We have got the ability to video every time our horse goes through inspection. The law gives us the right to video that inspection. It would be good if everybody did because I had people that was watching what was going on in the inspection area. And uh, there was a lot of the pocket being used again. And I, I looked, and I think there was five violations on the left foot. Uh, she wrote eight tickets, I believe it was, maybe nine. But five on the left foot, and then a couple of scar rules. But we have so many different obstacles that we have to jump through when we show. 
And it wouldn't be so bad, but this particular lady was the same one that had an altercation with a exhibitor to where I believe charges were filed. I'm not sure all about it, but they turn around and send that same woman, which she has trouble picking up the feet. And, and to me, she has a predetermined attitude on what she's going to do. And uh, I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but sometimes it looks like there's competition going on because we'll be floating along real good all of a sudden. Uh, violations found and then it's back and forth as to who, who does the most. Yes. I've got a, I've got a problem with that. Plus, I've got a problem with a lady coming in here that we know has a problem inspecting horses, but they send her to a show that for Carol Misseldine did a fantastic job of putting on the show. Oh, yes, she did. And she did it for a good cause. So when you do that, you not only hurt the exhibitors, but you hurt the fundraiser that, that that's far. And, and to send someone in here that evidently has, has a problem with our horse, I, I just, I have a problem with that. Yeah. I mean, at least send somebody that's open-minded. You know, when the government does a good job, I'm going to be the first one oh, to yeah, pat them too. on the back. That's right. I believe we need the Horse Protection Act. I mean, it's something that we oh, yeah, actually you, we need. We need that and stuff like that. I'm the same way. You know, if they if they do a good job, and I think that, you know, and they doing what they supposed to do, hey, that's I'm more for it. Well, I am too. I yeah. mean, it, it's something that we need, but I just don't believe in overdoing it. You know, you you can give someone a a, a sedative or a painkiller. And it's good, but if you give them too much, you could kill them. That's right. So, and that's what I think they're doing. They're choking us down. And and I've talked to a few people and found out that during the celebration, they're wanting horses that are being rode, being ready for the night's event. They want DQPs to be out there to check them to see if they're compliant. And that's going to open up a big can of worms because I think, how many areas are there? Four or five different yes, areas uh -huh. where they ride. But we're supposed to use their grace and everything. So my question is, what's going to happen when you're, you've got a horse out there that's going in the championship and, and you put grease on that horse? Is, is they going to have to ride him up for foreign substance? Or are they going to say, well, we'll just turn our back? can of worms yeah mm -hmm. other thing is is once when the horse protection act was original come out the government was going to come to oversee dqp is going to check government going to oversee we know how that went it didn't take long before the government was in there checking horses too and i'm afraid that's what's going to happen with them being out there and we're going to have people with horses out there they're trying to get ready to show and they're making changes and they're going to be writing federal tickets yeah and, and that i've got a problem with so there's a lot of things that uh, that i'm looking at that we, we've got problems other than the humane society uh, we've got different things that we need to address uh, petty violations oh, like, yeah. like it, foreign substance. Foreign substance. You know, I'm telling you, to me, that's a that's a very petty thing right there because you go to store, you go to a store and you buy stuff like Corona or whatever, and that's helped to heal a horse. But now, on their eyes, that's a foreign substance. I know that that's my problem. It's kind of like if you spray paint the horse's hoof to get him ready to the show, and a little bit gets up on the hair. I mean, it wasn't intentional. The Horse Protection Act was written for people who intentionally abused and soared horses. There's nothing intentional about that. There's nothing intentional about them checking the back feet. It seems like they've taken that rubber band and they keep stretching it, stretching it, stretching it just to prove that we are wrong and they are right. 
which every time they, they have taken any step to verify what they're saying, it's backfired. Oh, yes. We'll give you a second opinion. Well, that didn't work out, so now we don't get a second opinion. It just, I just wish that DMOs would come to a show with an open mind that, hey, the soul horse is dead. They might as well That's get right. ready for that. Mm -hmm. That horse is dead. dead He's yeah. been dead. You're not going to find a, what, what can be considered a sore horse that the HPA was written for. That's right. You're not going to find a horse out there that has their feet all mangled that the horse protection. You're not going to find them. The last one I know of was the one that uh, Clint Sieve kept parading around and come to find out after it was after his death that he was the one that messed up the horse's his feet, feet yes. and it was done after he left cat dies over in Winchester because I videoed his feet over there and them feet was pristine. But then a month later, they're all messed up. Someone did it. Yes. Who, who was training him then? Then, this you are Clancy. Yeah. see. So it, it's all of this, people need to just video your inspections and note that it is not you're supposed to do with the ball of your thumb, not the edge of your thumb, and not the bone. Yes. Those are illegal. If you see a BMO turn that thumb up and go down into the pocket, that's not a proper pal palpation. Call them out on it. You got it on video. Let them know that you see what they're doing. And the same thing if a DQP does it. Yes. I mean, I'm not throwing rocks one way that I don't throw it the other. We've got, we've got a great horse. We've got a great industry. We need to protect it yeah, on whatever right. grounds we can. I, I think we're, we've got some spring showcase. It, this was your fast show this year. Here's your ultimate honor in Jack Harney for Justin Harney, Youth Pony. I tell you what, Jerry, the adult did not want no part of that pony class. No, that was a good, that was a good class. A little man rode the hair off that horse. He did. He made it, he done a good job. Right there's big enough. No, that's Black Gen. I'm sorry, that's Black Gen Scout. Amateur five year old stallion winner. Megan Hammond. I tell you what, all she did was reload. Oh yeah, that's a good horse too. That's a real yeah. good horse. I was thinking about ponies all the way watching that kid. <laughs> Megan made a great show now. And here's Jimmer's Country Girl and Josh Watts for Carol Baxter. Josh does a real good job with that horse. That, hey, right yeah, that horse is. And I tell you, Carol is real good too. Oh yeah. I don't believe she's been beat on. It. No. Well, that's that. Mayor's only lost one class. And that was a grand championship. Yeah. All right, here's a Super Bowl MVP in B.B. Beasley. The little girl can ride. Here's a kingpin in Bob Adcock. 15 to an under winner. Bob got a bunch of good horses now, I tell you. He can go to the barn pointing in the direction you get on the You're right. Mm -hmm. That's where it should be. Probably been a trainer in his early oh, years. Yeah. He's in the enjoyment stage of his life now. Yeah. Now he got some good ones. 
Right there, Major Bill and Dan Waddell. I tell you what, George and Kim are mighty proud of that horse oh, right yeah. there. I don't blame him. I would be too. He's 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 one of the good ones. Mayor Bill. It's another good right There's the medalist, yeah. Eli Cunningham. Hey, he's a good rider now. He is a good rider. We've got a lot of good youth riders, and I'm hoping that next weekend we see a ton of them. Yeah. I'd love to see every one of them classes back to the hill. Especially that first time the show. Oh, yeah. Right there's Char Queen and Beth Beasley. Tell you what, Beth's got a good lineup of horses. Yes, she do. Right there's Joe Pa and Winky Groover for Shane Porterfield. That open special class would be a big class hey. this year. I like this horse now, and he does a great job showing yeah. it. Here's a Mighty Gin and Sam Martin for Mike Floyd, your three-year-old stallion Ryder Cup winner. Tell you what, that's a good one too. Yeah. Here is I Am Big Enough. That's one I was thinking about. She made a great show. Oh yeah, she did make a good show. I'm telling you, it, these kids, they get out there now. She won the other night. Yeah. And look, if you look at her, take her out of the picture, just look at that horse, you'd think he had a state class. Oh yeah. I mean, he looked awfully good. That horse consistent every time he's showing. I mean, he's the same way. Sign of a good trainer. Yep. And a good horse. And a, good, and a good, rider. good rider. Yep. And now you can do your job. We'll be right back after these <laughs> messages. I love it. <laughs> same bloodline, same mother, same father. And here he is. Now, this is offspring. Now, Hero is standing at stud at Jerry Williams Stable. Yes. Now, I'm going to tell you, that's a, that's a real nice horse. That horse had an injury happen to him in the stall when he was young. Um, but now, I tell you, got all got a lot of talent. That hero horse does. He's a real nice horse. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. As you know, I have a big passion for the Tennessee walking horse, but I also have another passion, and that's for communication systems and saving my customers money. And we've done automobile dealerships, shoe stores, law offices, dentist offices, even the Breeders Association. I have installed systems from California to New York to Florida. And now for a limited time, I am giving three months free service to everybody that signs up for host my calls. And there will be no installation charge. Call me today, 931-581-4411 and see if I can save you money on your communications. What does Habitat for Humanity build? Who? Oh. Opportunity, joy and togetherness, growth and transformation, strength and stability, community, home. Hey everybody, I'm Garth Brooks. And I'm Trisha Yearwood. And nothing illustrates the beauty of what we can build together like Habitat for Humanity. A safe, decent, affordable place to call home is a canvas full of possibilities. In our work with Habitat, we've seen what's possible. Financial stability, peace of mind, room to grow and play, better health, brighter futures. In your community and around the world right now, neighbors are helping neighbors build masterpieces of their own. Visit Habitat.org to learn more and get involved today. 
You know, my friends think I know everything there is to know about the walking horse industry. And I do know a lot, but not everything. I do know one thing, though. My father told me I could find out anything I needed to know about this industry by going to walkinghorsereport.com. And you know what? He was right. Everything from single night shows to multi night shows, sibling and progeny searches, rider cup standing, stallion reports. They even have a calendar of shows for the entire year and all the current news. It's all right there at the tip of my fingers when I go to walkinghorsereport.com. You know, they could do it themselves, but I don't think I'm going to tell them. Let's just keep them wondering how I know so much. All right. Now, I'm going to put you on the spot. Mm-hmm. I am. Because we're, we're going to the Upper Cumberland. My good buddy, Bob Roach, sent me a couple of videos. And there's a young man in one of them that you know quite well. And I'm just going to see how well you promote him. Well, you know, sometimes on stuff like that, I'm, you're harder on your own than you are somebody else's. You know, I used to say that to my son. I, I tell him I, when I was coaching, I say, buddy, I just got to be harder on you than I am on them so I can be hard on them too. That's, that's right. You got some good ones. All right, let's go to them. There you go. You can talk about this in first. Oh, this was a good class right here. That 15 to and under. That 15 to and under class was a, was a real good class. I'm going to tell you, they had a pretty good show up there. They did. Because they had other horse shows going on, you know, yeah. was around. Well, I know that that one was, was a tough one because yes. they, they had some good ones in there. The 15 to and under, you couldn't ask for much better. Oh, yeah. That's a fact. But that's the, that's the one that won right there. The way I am yep. at Tina Moss for Shane Porterfield. Shane got some good horses. Hey, I think all he does is go to the barn yeah. and picks one. There you go. Now let's hear it. Oh, this was a good class here. You know, I tell you, I was I was proud of Jeremy on this class right here. That that horse there, that the real horse is. I'm gonna tell you, is a, a real nice horse. I'm a, that's about one of the best times I ever seen him was right here. Jeremy does a good job yes. now. He does. Honor's home run was in there with Jordan Cahill. Yeah. And Rogue Status, I like that name, and Randy Young. But, uh, but the junior got a bunch of good horses. You know, I just... I like the way Jeremy holds his hands. Yeah. He's got a good set of hands. You can tell he just lets it go. I taught him well. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you was going. <laughs> Jeremy, I, it I was all him, about you I, until he said that. I taught him well. <laughs> you taught, I, I told you the right thing to do, buddy. You got it right. All right, now we're going to go to the spring stra extravaganza, which... Carol Misseldine, you did well. She had right up, right at 300 entries over yeah. there. Mm -hmm. And uh, all in all, they, they did fantastic. Even with the problem they had at the, in the inspection area, yeah. they still put on one well of a the show. Horses, yeah. Some great horses. And I had, a, I had a lot of people calling and commenting on how, how well it was run, how quick. So here we go. Yeah. Here's your 11 and under. Everybody recognizes that one right there. Oh, yeah. Ali Joe and Cole Hahn took the blue in this class with Jen's Not Kidding and Lexi Parker as reserve. But this is a good class. Any of our youth classes are good. I just, I want to see more youth involved. Yeah. And to do that, we need to have clinics to I, where these kids see the horses. He, yep. I tell you, this class right here was a good class. Um, Allie Joe and that horse gonna have a, a big future right there. I mean, I think, you know, that's a nice horse. She rides him very well. She presents that horse very well. 
She gets it done now. There's no doubt about it. She does get it done. Cole Hahn and Allie Jo Jacobs. And I tell you, after all the rain we had, that ring was a good ring too. I mean, it was. I mean, they done a good job on on hey, working Jake that ring. That's that. what I'm saying. She, he done a good job on working that that ring. Well, if the, when we had the show down in Lynchburg, when it was supposed to have been, we could have had it if it wasn't for the rain and the grounds around it. Because I talked with guys talking to you, he said, "Well, it take nothing to get that ring ready." Yeah. And they they're just good. They know oh, what yeah. they're doing. They know what they're doing. You're right. Now here, this watch the, the horse. That's what I, I kept watching the horse and trying not to watch the rider. Because Maxine, is, she's a great rider, but that horse was hitting, I mean, he was getting it done. That horse is like a sewing machine. I mean, he just stays steady the whole time. That's, that's a nice horse right there. Well, I thought Maxine did a well of a job yes. on it. I really did. She, uh, she works hard on her riding. She really does. His horse is what you call a real consistent horse. Yeah. And I mean, he just, when you look up and something else making a mistake or doing something, he gonna steady doing the same thing. You know he reminds me of? Samson? Yeah. Cause he, he was the same, same way, same way. Youth Pony winner, I am big enough, and Maxine Beasley for Beth Beasley. Couldn't ask for much better yeah. than that right there. She really put on a show. Now right here, this amateur two-year-old stay in class, it was tough. Oh, it was a tough and class. Errol tough. Smith and Courtney Luttrell took the blue for Luttrell and Connor. Coach with honors, Howard Eastridge was reserve. That's a Test nice little horse. Testifying Kim Leonard. And then classic action, Ben Moss. But I'm going to have to say, I was very impressed with Errol Smith. Errol Smith is a good horse. I got kind of, you know, we, stole, I sold him as a baby and then turned around and stored him and, and everything else. I'm going to tell you, that horse there is, and Courtney done a real good job on that horse right there. I thought, I thought she made a fantastic show. And that's that horse first show, first time ever showing. Is that right? Yes, first time. I mean, she done well, a good job. I is, mean, are you going to pay me to say something nice about you? <laughs> Jerry Williams started this coach. <laughs> Mr. Paul, you know, owned him when we sold him, and he told me after he won his class, he said, you owe me some more money. He <laughs> <laughs> thinks you got more. Harold Smith and yeah. Courtney Luttrell for Luttrell and Connor. Tell you what, that horse that's, is outstanding. That's a man. nice horse, a real nice horse. Courtney, well... Got a good rider on it, yeah, too, she does. Courtney, Courtney can get it done, buddy. Oh, she can ride a horse now. She's a super rider. And a lot of women in this industry can get that riding done yeah. on them horses now. And here you go, Equitation Lebanon Under. I'll tell you what, watching her do this equitation is really something. Yep. She does get it done. You know, when you look at, at how small she is and how big the horse is, yeah. but when you watch her, she is so into what she is doing. Yeah. I mean, you. this is a child doing this. Yeah. You know, 
That's what makes it amazing is when you watch these kids, especially her now, she, she is uh, one that you can really watch because you can learn from her. Mm -hmm. Good job, Allie, good, good job. job, good job, real good job. You watch old Jake while she's yeah. riding and he's proud as a peacock. Oh buddy. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Anytime you your kids ride, you're gonna be proud. You oh know? yeah. I really enjoyed this now. Yeah. Bob was he was out there by himself. But when you're out there by yourself, everybody's watching, watching you. every mm -hmm. move you make. Yep. And I thought Robert did a fantastic job. And uh, slim and hot. I'm, I told him <laughs> on a post, I said, slim and hot was just like that slim and mm -hmm. hot. He was hot. He got it done. That horse is getting better too. Oh yeah. It really is. That's one thing, we, we've got a lot of amateurs that just flat out love oh, yeah. the show. Love the show and can ride and, and does a good job presenting that horse. There he is, slim and hot, Robert Dortch. But I believe Robert owns that horse now. Yeah. Nice, nice. He does, does a good job. Show Pleasure Rider Cup. Now this was a good one too. Georgia, Florida line right there took the blue. You can see why. Yeah. With Knox Blackburn in the saddle for Robert Dorch. The White Hawk, John Allen Calloway for Wilson and Cunningham. They call me Samson, Link Webb, Boston Kate Tillman, and Stretch Your Dollar, Bobby Hugh for Lucky Collins. Finished out the ribbon. But there he is, Georgia, Florida line, and Knox Blackburn. That's a nice horse. He, hey. Like I say, he's one of the ones consistent horses. He is one of the best. Yeah. Here's the state class. This one was... One, Something that uh, was some kind of class. That's just yeah. it in a nutshell. It was some kind of class. They, uh, walking Mr. Charlie took the blue. Kobe 24 was reserved with Chris Elton. Zaro Jr., which I thought made an outstanding show yeah. as well, was third. And then Master of Design, Dan Waddell finished out the ribbon. But when you get down to it, that can, canter is is what hurts a lot of horses. Yeah. But walking Mr. Charlie and Jimmy McConnell is just like when I talked to Terry. I said, you know, Jimmy McConnell, you got to watch him every yeah. time he comes in there because when he comes, he's coming to win. Yeah. <laughs> Might as well get that down pat right now. He's coming to win. They had some good horses in that class. You yeah, know, they did. horses, you know. And Zorro so, Jr. made a good show, but Zorro look there. Jr. He's yeah. getting it done. That and right there. I mean, you wasn't no slouches yeah. in there. Kobe made a good show. Was no slouches in that class at all. And there's Jimmy McConnell. Yep. And walking Mr. Charlie for Terry and Lisa Smith of Winchester, Tennessee. That's over in Franklin County, oh, yeah. my part of the woods. 
but they're a little bit further into Franklin County than I am. It's a good horse though, made yeah. a great show. Terry's a nice guy. I know I know Terry was tickled. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. He was real tickled. I think we're gonna let you do your job again and then we're gonna have some fun. Oh yes. We'll be right back after these short messages. <laughs> Can't believe you're doing this alone. I've done it before. I remember. You threw your back out. <laughs> How you holding up? Hand me that board. Nothing wrong with getting help. I'm good. I did it when Felicia left. I'll figure it out. I know you will. But you don't have to do it alone. That's all I'm saying. If I promise to look into it, will you drop it and help me build this fence? <laughs> now you need my help. It can be a real pain sometimes, you know? Mm -hmm. If you or a veteran you know needs support, don't wait. Reach out. Find resources at va.gov reach. The Mona Dean family is proud to announce that the multi-time world champion and world grand champion minor ordeal is now available for breeding at Sugar Creek Breeding Facility for the 2023 spring breeding season. Minor ordeal. Minor ordeal has proven year after year that he is one of the elite champions of all time winning five world grand championships, one world grand championship, and the reserve world grand championship as well. Minor ordeal, a major win here in the two-year-old division, our world grand champion. Make the call to breed to a true champion, Minor Ordeal, 931-680-0897. champion in amateur and open competition, four times amateur world grand champion, and 2019 world grand champion. Standing at stud for Joanne Dow at Fantasy Farm in Bell Buckle, Tennessee. Call 931-389-6983 for breeding information. An estimated 11 million Americans have heart valve disease, but most of us know little to nothing about it. People can be born with valve problems, or they can develop from cardiovascular disease, infections, certain cancer treatments, and age, with older adults at the highest risk. If diagnosed early, it can usually be successfully treated, no matter what your age. Valve disease can cause a number of symptoms, including lightheadedness, irregular heartbeat, shortness of breath, tiredness, swelling of the ankles and feet, and not feeling like yourself in general but is often only detected when your heart is listened to by a healthcare professional. So listen to your heart, see your healthcare professional, discuss your risk factors and any potential symptoms, and go to valvediseaseday.org to learn more. More of What a Horse, coming up. <laughs> Okay, now we are going to go back in time to a time when we, uh, I, well, I just enjoyed myself to no end. It's when we had the Equine Education Day in 2018 at the Calsani, now Cooper Steel Arena. Yes. But uh, when I go, when I look back at all the kids that was in there and the fun they were having it was really something and we we had a lot of people different presentations a lot of stuff getting ready everybody doing stuff wanting to help uh it was something special he's getting bags ready for him we had displays up we had them showing how to tie ribbons. There's Bobby. He's out there. Of course, he's doing a lot of announcing. But 
the longer we went, the fuller it got. We ended up with over 2,000 kids. And uh, you were part of it. Yeah. There's Walt Time Charlie. That was a stick horse. <laughs> <laughs> This whole day was, when we first started, we had, I had one family call. I, then I started, had a few homeschool parents call, had classroom over in Cowan call. Then I got Huntland call. And it seemed like the more calls and emails I got, the more children that was there. And uh, some of the sc schools had high reputation, I mean, consider attendance. Uh, but what was really special was I got a call from court down at Liberty. And he says, Jerry, he says, how many kids can we bring? I said, as many as you want. He said, but I got, Several that want to come. I said, well, and finally he said, Jerry, the whole school wants to come. And I said, bring them. <laughs> and uh, they did. They brought their school. Huntland had way on up there in attendance. Uh, it was just kids everywhere. And it, it was just very, very special. Yes. And that's why now I'm saying that we need to do this more. Oh yeah. We need to do more of them. We need to do them at different locations. And I would like to see like Tweba at one time would go to the schools and give presentations. I'd like to see that. Here, you can do that. <laughs> <laughs> but I would like to see it do, you know, like you say, go different places and have it involve the schools back, you know, have a person could take a horse to a school, you know, outside yeah. and exhibit and stuff. I've I done a few of them there in Nashville at the Ag Day Center um, that they had as a couple of them schools. There is no limit to what could be accomplished if we would just go out and do it. That's I right. Mean, but it, it just it just takes someone to step up and say let's start it. Yeah. Get it going. Other people will get involved. And that's what that's what it takes. It just takes getting involved, committing to it, and going. Yes. So we uh once we have our show in Lynchburg, with the funds we raise, I've already talked to uh, Walmart again. I think that we just need to name a school. Now, of course, school's gonna be out in May, but this yeah. fall, we can start planning in next spring when the you have your travel days, yeah. your, your the days that you can get out and go places, field days and all this, then that's when we can start involving kids. Kids, that's and right. And we can even do it this winter some. I mean, it doesn't have to be summer. We can go to, in the fall, we can take horses to the schools. schools yeah. Let them see them. You know, if it is taking them, just pet one. Because a lot yeah. of kids ain't never been close up to a horse. The only closest they've been to a horse is on TV. That's it. You know, out there, Uncle Nears out there, so many people that come out there and, you know, just amazes just to see the horse, you know, just get to be close to a horse. Tell you what, educating them to the horse is, is one of the best things about it is educating them to the horse. Oh, yeah. It's, it's all about the education. I have took some horses to behavior schools that they have, and at the end, at the end of the day, 
all the kids that was giving problems, they were listening, looking, and wanted to, to be around the horse. Most of them will. You know, when I grew up, there was a show that was on that was a, a boys' camp where they would take kids, that, uh, troubled kids, and send them to this summer camp yeah. to where they rode horses. Uh -huh. There are the girls. <laughs> Or just letting other kids just see different things and experience things that they ain't never get to experience before. That's it. it. It don't take much to do it. You just have to jump in and do it. And do it. You're right. Because horses interest everybody. Yes. Now, they really do. I don't care who they are. They interest people. And especially when they see a Tennessee walking horse, 1,000, 11, 1,200 pound horse that a little 50, 60 pound child can control. Oh, yes. Something else, something very special. Here in a couple of weeks, I got to take a horse to a school over in Murfreesboro and do that with. Well, I won't video. Now it's, if it's where I can, I'm going yeah. with you. <laughs> it's it's all about the kids and try to get them involved in these these horses. Well, I think if we were ever successful in getting different schools to have an equine class, yes, and then start having them compete against each other, the horse would grow. They got they got youth rodeos that are attended big time. Uh, yes. If they can do it for the rodeo, we can do it for the walking horse. horse. Yeah. It's not that big a deal. We've got academy, so we have academy in the schools. Yes. And then let them compete against each other. Doesn't make any difference if you start out with two, three, or four kids. If you got that school, it's like archery and everything else. Yes. You can get your club and start having competition and yeah. competing against another club. Yeah. So it, it just, it, it all boils down to money and raising funds. But if, if we can raise funds for anything, we ought to be able to raise funds for youth activities. Yes. I know my son started an archery with just five or six kids for the archery competition. And now he's got over 40 that compete. They win national titles and everything in archery. Yeah. You go over to Winchester, cat dies at the Black Anvil. Last time I heard she had 40-something students, and she teaches them everything. Not just showmanship, but she teaches equitation. She teaches barrel racing. You name it, and she shows them how to do, do it. it. Okay. And that, that's why they get involved. That's the whole deal. Let them have fun. That's a wonderful thing right there. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, that's very good. That old Mac Deacon way down yonder in the end. Yeah. USDA was there, Farm Bureau, that gentleman right there is from Farm Bureau. That was Mike Inman, yes. the CEO of the celebration at the time. Tweeba had a booth set up to they should show videos. Had people like right there. I believe that right there is the USDA yes. showing the parts of the horse. Right there is Nanny. Yeah. How many of your horses is she inspected? A bunch of them. The USDA yeah. got involved in it. I mean, it was something for everybody. Yes. But look at the interest the kids showed. I mean, it wasn't wasn't that they were made to do anything. They really wanted to be a part, part of, of this right. and see what was going on. 
Remember her? She used to yeah. inspect all the time. She had put on the bin bag, another USDA booth. Veterinary, teaching them the different things about working yeah. on the horses. That's what I'm saying. It's a bit educational. I mean, everybody coming together as one. Well, it's just knowing, putting it together, and then doing it. It doesn't take yes. that much. Everybody plans their own booth. Yes. They come in, they set up, and then the only thing I'd like to see is just as they come in, let them start going through the booth, not sit down and go through a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Uh, we can have a prayer and the national anthem. Just stop. Spend a moment, do the national anthem while they're out there. There's Mac Deacon. Yes. He was teaching them all about the horseshoes and what it took to shoe a horse. Uh huh. Uh, just everybody pitched in, and that's all it takes. And they can do this any part of the country. Oh, yes. It doesn't have to be Shelbyville, Tennessee. They can do it in North Carolina, South Carolina, Alabama, yeah. Virginia. That's right. You just, got, you just got to start it. I guarantee you, you start it anywhere, people will join in and help. help. That's right. Especially when they see that there's interest. Uh -huh. That's the number one thing. When people start responding and showing interest, different people will get you'll, on the board and they'll say, lie. hey, let's get it done. And it, and it works out. Yeah. It just works out. It's just simple. You don't have to spend months planning. Put together what you want to do and say, all right, first we got to have kids. Start notifying superintendent schools, principals. Yeah. When you got field day, when's a good day for this one, good day for that one. Then put it out on social media. I guarantee it'll spread like a gas fire. Yeah. It's just, uh, and that's all it takes. Once the numbers start coming, you'll start seeing people you'll will start say, people hey, coming in. hey. I mean, uh, that's the way it worked with, with this equine education. You've seen how it turned out. It doesn't, it's not something that, it's, it's not that hard to do. Yeah. That's, that's the bottom line. If you've got some funds, it's not that hard to do. And most of our funds, I think, you know, I think the whole thing costs a little over four grand. Uh, well, everything. Mm -hmm. And we furnished food. We furnished everything on the sun, drinks. People jumped in. We had pizza delivered. Uh, they gave us deals on pizza. Did you get any pizza? No, I ain't getting no I pizza. I should have sold you some for a dollar <laughs> a slice. <laughs> All right, what are you going to do this weekend? I got to go to a graduation party. Well, I'm going to have a family reunion Sunday with some relatives from up north. But uh, other than that, I may go over to the Sheba show. Yeah, I'm probably going to the Sheba show a little bit, but my daughter's graduating from high school. But next weekend... I'm going yep. to be in Lynchburg, Tennessee. Yep. All right, folks, we'll see you again next week with another episode of What a Horse. Yep. You're right. You're going to be here? Yes, sir. Jerry Williams will be back. He'll be signing autographs on checks, <laughs> I hope. Have a good weekend. See you later. Working out hard every day to be the best I can. I shift it to the right, shift it to the left, hunger down low and reach high to the sky. Got my rhythm down pat, so they say. I'm looking like a winner in every way. So when I hear somebody say, what a horse, I know they're talking about me, of course. And I'm going to be in that winner circle someday. I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker, a high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker. I'm going to be in that winter circle someday. Ah, oh, please start talking.
Thank you.